compression and leading zero compression in the same address. So if you look over here, you have the original address, and uh, right below you have leading zero compression. See, we took out all the rest of those zeros, just left the last one. So we left this one, that one, that one. Now, if these were a number, like let's say this one, that one still stays. So that's leading zero compression. You can see it's a lot shorter to write, especially when humans are, are trying to write these things. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is so hard for people to wrap their mind around is it's so, IPv6 is so very, very different from IPv4. IPv4 is, is very much human readable. It's in decimal. Uh, you sort of have an understanding of it. I think it's more friendly because it is in decimal. Every octet is limited to 255, 1 to 255, so you sort of know what you, what to expect there. The numbers look friendly because it's in decimal, and so I think it leads uh, to a comfort level that you don't necessarily get with IPv6. IPv6 is 128 bits as opposed to 32. It's in, it's in uh, hexadecimal to conserve space. Uh, so they've actually done everything to make it as human friendly as possible. They have the types of compression. It's in hex. Hex actually seems like it's something that would make it unfriendly at first glance, but actually it really does make it much friendlier. Um, if that was in decimal, those numbers would be huge uh, with that address space, and it, it really would not be as friendly as it is now. Uh, so you see here we have in the first example leading zero compression. Then we have zero compression. You see the two colons there, and we lo and we skipped out. With those two colons, we took the place of all of these gone. So shortens up quite a bit. Then we have the end. And the last one uses both leading zero and zero compression. So we have right here the two colons, gets rid of all those zeros. We use leading zero compression here where the six is. We got rid of all three of these zeros here. And then we have the last octet. So the, the bottom is an example of using both. Uh, and this type of address here actually has a IP version 4 address embedded in it. That's why the beginning is a lot of zeros. And this one, 2001, there's also one that starts with 2002, uh, is something to keep an eye out for uh, because it really does... It, it, you, you're going to recognize this. A lot of tunneling mechanisms use similar devices that have IPv4 compatible embedded addresses in them. And uh, you know, if, if you're around these addresses a lot, the 2001, 2002, these sort of type of prefixes that have those embedded addresses are a great way to play with IPv6 in a way that matches up to your existing network to get you off the ground quickly without having to worry about subnetting these huge things and, and doing IPv6 native addresses. So uh, let's go to the types of IPv6 addresses and we'll take a look at those types that, uh, that you have access to. So, there's uh, several kinds of IPv6 addresses. You have unicast addresses. That's what a standard IPv4 address is. It's unicast, one-to-one. -one. You also have multicasts. Remember this from IPv4. And you have something called anycast. Uh, so let's, let's talk about uh, unicast. Uh, a unicast address identifies a single network interface. A packet sent to a unicast address is delivered to that specific computer. The following types of addresses are unicast IPv6 addresses. You have global unicast addresses. Uh, those are publicly assignable, publicly routed internet addresses. You also have link local addresses. You want to think of a link local address. That is your actual physical link address. Everyone gets this. If I assign a global unicast address to an interface, I also have a link local address. This is the one that is encoded with your MAC address. And it's unique to every computer or every interface uh, card. It has, a, it has a different MAC address. You also have site local addresses. Site local addresses are now, well, that's very interesting. Uh, site local addresses are deprecated. They replace them with ULAs, unique local IPv6 addresses, uh, unicast addresses, and there's also special purpose addresses, which we'll talk to later. So let, let's start with, uh, with the top here. So you have your global unicast addresses. These would be assigned to you by your IPv6 ISP. And these are very, very similar to IPv4 public addresses. They're publicly routable. You can access the internet with them. The next type of address that you have, which is always on an interface, if you have IPv6 enabled, you have a link local address. Uh, if you're on Linux or Mac OS X, you can type ifconfig and you'll see it. 
IP config slash all on Windows or the Cisco router show IPv6 INT, uh, interface brief, uh, brief. We'll show you those commands that are configured. And link local addresses are unique addresses. You can actually use just link local addresses to communicate on a subnet. That's what auto configuration does. It configures your link local addresses because everyone on that physical link, the router advertises for that physical link, it advertises information, the DNS server advertises, so you can actually use only link local addresses. But you should think of these very much like the 169 addresses that you get when you don't have a network cable plugged in or you lose connectivity on an IPv4 network. Uh, that's sort of what link local addresses are. The next thing that you have is site local addresses. Now these are deprecated. Uh, they're not using these anymore. Uh, this is kind of, uh, you know, site local addresses basically were supposed to replace RFC 1914 addresses. They were basically, you know, 192.168.1, those kind of private, non-internet routable addresses. Uh, and they worked well. I, I think they did a good job. And then they decided um, in another RFC, discussing it further, this was recent, about 2003, that site local addresses had the same problem that, uh, that private addresses have now in IPv4, and that problem is is that if any of you have set up VPNs, you'll notice that if network 1 is a 192.168.1.0 network, and you're trying to connect to your office at work, and it's also a 192.168.1.0 network, the VPN won't work because the networks are the same on both sides, so it won't route. Now, we know that there's this really hasn't been a major problem. Any IT person or IT group worth their salt would use a non-common address. Uh, I, I, you know, we do a lot of networks at Exile Technologies. I've never run into this issue where we set up something odd and someone else had just the exact same odd thing that we've set up. So it really is sort of a non-problem. I think ULAs are a are a problem or a solution searching for a problem. I, I personally do, but apparently the folks that run uh, the IPv6 task force think otherwise. And so they basically deprecated site local addresses. Uh, site local addresses were, I think they were fine. But they said, you know what, let's find a way to get the benefits of site local addresses but not have there ever be a situation in which one network uses the same address as another network. And so to get around this, what they did was they did unique local unicast addresses. And what these are is these are global unicast addresses. They're publicly normal. They're indistinguishable from a public IP address, except that they've made an agreement not to route these addresses. So they basically are internet addresses that don't get routed. They're assigned outside your organization so that everybody has a unique one. Uh, apparently they think the overhead is not going to be that much to do that and uh, you know so you get assigned a unique ULA subnet for your network you put that as your private uh, IPv6 subnet and you're off you're off at the races I personally am not a big fan of ULA but then again I was not a big fan of virtualization for certain things and virtualization seems to have taken off so uh, sometimes I've been known to be wrong so then you have your normal multicast addresses. These are the same things as IPv4, uh, and we're very familiar with these. Uh, a packet sent to a multicast address is delivered to all interfaces identified by that address. <clears throat> then it brings us to Anycast. This is probably one of the coolest things uh, that I that I can think about IPv6. And Anycast, if you've used OpenDNS, OpenDNS.org, they used Anycast addresses. And what Anycast addresses are? They are addresses that they're just like multicast. Everybody has